Hello and welcome back to the channel for another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Key Stage 1, which is Year 2 SATs arithmetic paper. Now, I know that in a previous video, I talked about these tests being optional this year. That is true. However, many schools that I know of and spoken to are still going to administer these tests in some way, just for their own assessment to get an idea of where they think the children are and for a gap analysis to see what the children need to work on. So the first thing I want to tell you is um, this uh, paper is out of 25 marks and um, there isn't a specific pass mark for the paper. However, there is a pass mark um, across the two papers. So children in year two will do the arithmetic paper and a reasoning paper, two papers, and then the teacher will combine their marks and the pass mark for when you add both of those marks together is actually 36. So again, interestingly, just like the key stage two paper, if they were to score full marks on this first paper, which you could argue is the easier of the two, then they would only need 11 marks from that second paper to pass overall. But again, I will say that yeah, the children are only in year two when they're taking these and the teachers tend to do this alongside a teacher assessment. So even if the child has a bad day on the test or isn't really in the mood or struggles with tests, then the teacher will take that into account. It won't just be based on this mark. But anyway, I'm going to talk through the test and hopefully this will be helpful when looking at some of these questions and how to solve them with your child. First question then, um, these first few are very, I would say they're quite easy. And um, that's because this is a key stage one assessment, which means they're not just tested on things they've learned in year two, but also things they've learned in year one as well. The first few questions are fairly straightforward. The children should be able to do them in their heads. There is other ways you can get them to do them, but um, counting on, counting back would be the most straightforward. So three plus six, you're gonna count on either from six and count on three would be probably the easiest. So six, seven, eight, nine. 12 add two add two, what I would say is that they add the first two first, so 12 count on two, 13, 14. And then if you add the next two, that's gonna be 15, 16. Okay, just the children being able to count forwards and backwards is what they're being tested there. The next question, similar thing, but this time we are counting backwards. You could also get the children to draw a number line and put 13 at the end if they wanted to see it that way, and then subtract part of the seven. So you could subtract the three first, which would make 10. So making it into 10 might be easier. And then from 10, thinking about our number bonds, if we subtract another four, because seven is made up of three and four, if you subtract another four, you are left with six. So the answer would be six. They could count back in their heads or they could do it like this using a number line. Number four is the first multiplication question. Now in year two, the children need to know their two, 10 and five times tables. And in year one, they would should have learned how to count in two fives and tens. So this question says 10 times four. Now it's not asking them to know their fours, but it is asking them to know their tens. That multiplication sign, I always taught the children in year two meant groups of. So it could be 10 groups of four, or it could be four groups of 10. So I would get them to draw them out if they weren't sure. And I would ask them, right, okay, put 10 in each one of these then. So 10, 20, 30, and we count in tens, 40. So that's another way that they could do it. Or they could just count up in tens, 10, 20, 30, 40. Question five, again, we have three numbers to add. And I would suggest that they add the fives first. This is slightly adding but also slightly um, multiplying because it's like we're counting in fives. So 35 add 5 is 40 and then if we count another 5 and add another 5 to that we get 45. Other ways you could do it is you could ask the child to add both fives together to make 10 and then 35 add 10 might be easier for them. Number 6, 22 add 20. Once again we are counting on here there's several ways for the child to do it, but you could say, well, 10, 20 is made up of two tens. So we could start with 22. And then if we add two tens to 22, we get 32. And then if we add another 10, we get 42. So we're kind of counting on in tens there. 
There is another way that you can ask the children to solve this question. So let me just put that answer in the box. Okay, 42. Yeah, there is another way that you could ask the child to solve this, which involves drawing a sort of place value chart like this. But I'm going to show you that for some of the other questions, these ones could be done by counting on and in tens. Again, we've got number seven, another multiplying question, and this time we are looking at groups of five. So three groups of five. So I'm going to draw three groups. One, two, three. So we've got one group of five, two groups of five, and three groups of five. And if we count on in fives, so that's five, ten, fifteen. If the child still struggles with that, you could actually get them to draw five <coughs> in each one of these. And then they could add them all up to see that they actually does make 15. So see how your child does. OK, they may be confident counting in fives. They may need to draw them out. Number eight, we've got uh, multiples of 10 to add. So I would get the child to add 60, add 10, count on 10, make 70. And then once again, 20 is actually made up of two tens. So we're looking at 70, add 10, which is 80. So we've done that one. And then we might need to add another 10 to 80. So 80, add another 10, because 20 is made up of two tens, would be 90. So again, there is a way you can do this through drawing a place value chart, but I think that the most efficient way is to look at the multiples of 10, look at a, an easy way to add them together. And this is actually assessing, can the child count forwards and backwards in tens? So now we come to two questions that are going to require us to do some sort of written method. So the first one I've decided to draw a number line for. This is something the children should be good at in year two is just always looking to try and draw an empty number line. Here we've got 79. So you put your big number at the end. Now, if we were adding, we put the number at the beginning. But we can see here that we are subtracting. We are taking away. And I'm going to take away six. Now, you could take away one take away one, take away one six times, or you might say, well, let's take away five, which is 79 take away five is 74. And then we've got one more to take away because it's taking away six. So we'll do one small jump, take one away would give us 73. So that's subtracting using an empty number line. And again, you could do it where you're taking away part of the number and then the other part. Or if the child finds that too tricky, do just do six small jumps taking away one. The next question, number 10, I'm going to show you the um, place value chart method. So I've drawn out here a quick place value chart and I'm going to put tens over here and ones over here. Now, this is something the children should have learned when adding and subtracting in year two by showing the deans, drawing them out. Deans are like... Um, rods of 10 and then small cubes that we consider to be one and we can represent them with lines and dots so what i say to the child is we're adding two numbers let's make the big number first so how many tens have we got there and how many ones we've got three tens and 30 10 20 30 and we've got two ones one two okay and we're adding nine so we're adding nine ones so that's one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've added those nine ones. Now what have I got? So I've got 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So I've actually made a new 10. So I'm going to draw a quick uh, thing around the new 10 because actually that new 10 should now go into our tens column. So now I've got 10, 20, 30, I've got 40 on this side, and I've got one on here, making our final answer 41. And this is just a good way of showing the children how to add when crossing the tens barrier. Okay, we've got 32, but we're adding nine, so we're gonna go over to the next 10, it becomes 41. When we make a new 10 here, we must show that that 10 is moving into the tens column. All right, so we've got two questions here. Both have got a, another grouping question here, multiplying. So we've got two, 11 times two. It's not the 11 times table, it's the two times table. So two groups 
of 11. And again, you could either write 11 in each, or if your child finds that tricky, draw 11 dots in each. That would be 22. And we've got 6 divided by 2, which is our first divide question. And I say to the children, that sign there means sharing. And we're like sharing sweets out. So imagine we've got six sweets, six sweets, and we're sharing it between two of our friends. This number tells us how many groups we need to share it into. One, two. We've got two friends, right? Let's share out the six sweets. One, two, three, four, five, six. It has to be fair so we get equal amounts, right? So if we've done six shared between two, how much does each person get? they get three each. So three would be the answer there. So this symbol here, tell your child it means to share. And you could even do this physically by getting some sweets out. Okay, we've got another division question here. So based on what I told you before, that symbol meaning sharing, and this, sim this number tells us how many groups we're sharing into. Once again, I'm sharing it between two, two friends. But this time we've got a much bigger number, 24. So it's going to take a little bit while. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I think that your child could, they could know a two times table and know that 12 would be the answer here because they know they're using their times tables to help them. But a lot of children would still need to draw this out in year two, and that's perfectly normal. So now that I've done it, how much does each person get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve in each, which means that the answer is twelve. Each person would get twelve. Number fourteen, we've got another question here. We're adding tens and ones. So I've drawn out my place value chart and I've got tens and ones. Once again, we're going to make the big number first. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and then the ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now we're going to add to it because we are adding, not taking away. 32. So that's three tens, 10, 20, 30, and two ones, 1, 2. Now let's check what we've got all together. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So we've got 70 over here in the tens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We are not crossing the tens barrier this time, but we need to add both of these parts together, giving us a final answer of 78. So that's how you would solve these questions with your child using a place value method. Okay, so now we have our first fraction question. And similar to division, I always say to the children, well, we're finding a half of this number, which means the same as we're sharing it between this number so the denominator this number tells us how many people we are sharing out this number here a half of 60 so we're going to share it into two halves so it's the same as dividing by two the denominator tells us how many groups we need to draw 60 a half of 60 now this would take a long time to draw out some children do do it but along the way they can make mistakes so another way that you could do it is, well, let's see if we can partition this into two parts. And it's tricky because it's not um, a number that you could easily half because it's made up of 20. It's made up of 20 and it's made up of 20. How else can we partition this? Well, we could partition it into six tens, couldn't we? 10, 20, 30, 40. 50, 60. Now, if we look at this, I've got one group of 10 here, 30, and I've got one group of 10 here, 30, which means that 60, when shared, okay, into two equal groups would give me 30 and 30. 30 would be the answer. Now, I would see how your child feels. I mean, they may still want to use this way, but it's going to take a long time and they could make a mistake drawing the dots. Or you could have a conversation about what 60 is made from. Let's partition it into tens and see if we can split those tens in half so that both people get the same amount. And then they'll see that it's 30 for one person and 30 for another. So yeah, have a look at that question. There's a few different ways to solve it.
The next one, 16, we've got, um, again, a subtraction question. And this time it requires us to draw the place value chart. We are subtracting this time, though. But I still start off with the biggest number, 10, 20, 30, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I'm going to take away the smaller number and I need to take away the tens and ones separately. Starting with the ones, let's take three ones away. One, two, three, we'll cross those out. This is exactly what your child would do. And now let's take one ten away and we'll cross that out. So what are we left with? We've got three tens here, which is 30. And we've got two ones so when we put those two parts together, we are left with a final answer of 32. Yes, your child does need to go through this process and cross them out because that way they can see what they've got left over. OK, so we're all the way up to question 17 and 18. And again, two questions that require us to draw these place value charts. So starting with the biggest number 94 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 1 2 3 4 taking away only tens this time there are no ones to take away you could do this by counting back and put 94 over here and count back four tens so there is an empty number line method you could do you could get the child just hold 94 in their head if they can and count back four times in tens but if they can't do that then this is another way that they can use so we're taking away four tens one two three four and we can see now from there we've got 50 here five tens 10 20 30 40 50 and we've got four ones because we didn't take any ones away did we yeah leaving us with a final answer of 54 Next one, we have 14 plus 77, so let's make the bigger number, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we're going to add 14, so we're going to add the 10s and 1s separately, so 1 10 over here, and 4 1s, 1, 2, 3, 4, now do we need to carry a 10? Have we made a new 10? Let's have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, we have. So we draw a circle around our new 10. We move it into here. And we've got one left over. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 on this side. And then we've only got one on this side. So the final answer would be 91. But again, the children must go through this process so they can see that they've made a new 10. It's crossing that barrier, that tens barrier. It's going into the tens to make a new 10. And we've got one left over. OK, so two different styles of questions now. These ones are where the children are asked to solve a maths question where the box of the answer is not at the end, but either at the beginning or in the middle. So here we've got blank take away five equals three. So something subtract five is going to be three. Now, what I would say to the children is you could do the inverse. If you add those two parts together and we can do this as a bar model. So essentially, this is the part that we need to find out. Um, we've got this bit, which is three. OK. Um, and we've got a part here, which is five, because we have taken this bit away and we've been left with three. Now, if I add those two bits together, I should be able to get my whole. Three add five equals eight. So that's one way you could do it using a bar model. Or you could just say, let's do the inverse. Let's add them together and see if, what the answer is. Number 20, 11 plus something equals 77. This time I've gone with a number line. So we have the answer, but you could also do it as a bar model. This time we know what the whole is. It's 77. And we know that part of this whole is 11, but it's only a small part. So what we're actually looking for is this bit. What do we add to 11 to make 77? So I could actually start with 77 over here. Um, nope, sorry about that. I'm going to start with 11 over here. And what am I adding to 11 to get to 77? 
So, well, first of all, we need to add quite a few tens, don't we? So let's start by adding a multiple of 50. What does that get us to? 50 and 11 make 61, so I'm not quite there yet. We know that we need to get to 70, so let's add another 10. That gives us 71. And now we know that we're six away, so let's add a six. That gives us 77. Now, what have I added all together? Well, I've got 50, 60, and six. So it looks like I've added 66 all together. So 66 would be there. It would be our missing part. 11 and 66, yeah, make 77. So bar model, one way to show it. Number line, another way to do it. But it is a tricky question, okay? So it's gonna take some practice. Here we have a fractions question. Again, a half of 42, I'm gonna draw two groups. And I'm gonna split 42 into those. That number telling us how, many num how we're sharing it out. But once again, another way of doing it would be, rather than drawing all those dots, would be to split 40 into two parts. So it's 20 and 20, and to split two into two parts, which is one and one. So I know that one person would get 21, and another person would get 21. So when I split 42 into two parts, using that partitioning of tens and ones, it gives me 21. Yes, I could draw all of the 42 out here, but it'd be easy for your child to make a mistake drawing that many dots. This one, however, is a good one to use that method for because I'm doing 28 and I'm sharing it out into four groups. And I think this one would be a good method because it's not drawing so many. Um, so what is a quarter of 28? One, two, three, four. Okay, so now that I've shared those out into four groups, what is how many is in one group? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven in each, so a quarter of 28 would be seven. That would be a good question to use that strategy for. Okay, we're coming on to the last few questions now, and these two are, again, ones that I need a place value chart for. So I draw the place value chart out, and we've got tens and ones. Let's make the big number first, 10, 20, 30, 40, and one. 15, we are subtracting. So this time we are crossing out one 10 and five ones. So cross out a 10, that makes that, and cross out five ones. Oh dear, I can't do it. So this is why this question is a little bit trickier. I'm gonna have to borrow a 10. So how do I show that? Well, in the same way we carried a 10, we're gonna move a 10 into here. I'm gonna cross it out because we've taken it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's exchanging, borrowing a ten and making it ten ones. Now we've got eleven here. We can take away five. So one, two, three, four, five. What are we left with? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six in the ones and two in the tens, which makes twenty, giving us a final answer of twenty-six. So this question is trickier because the children need to learn this method of borrowing from the tens, crossing it out, moving it over with an arrow, making 10 ones. Okay, similar kind of thing here. We're gonna make the big number first, 67. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we've got seven ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're gonna take away 58. So we've got five tens to take away and eight ones. So let's start off with the tens. One, cross that out, two, three, four, five, so they're gone. And now we need to take away eight ones again. There's not enough, so we're gonna to have to borrow. That 10 is also gone, okay, because we're gonna move it into here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, can we take away eight ones? Yes, we can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, leaving no tens. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ones. And nine will be the answer. So these two questions are asking the children to 
show that they can borrow and exchange. Which brings us to the final question. This is number 25 and it's 82 take away 63. So another question requiring the place value chart. Again, let's make the big number 82, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and two ones. And then we're going to take away 60, starting with the tens. We've got six tens and three ones. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six tens we need to take away. Can we take away from the ones? No, we can't. So let's borrow another 10. He's going to go in there. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we can take away these three ones. One, two, three, leaving us with one ten and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ones. A final answer when we add those two bits together of nineteen. So the last few questions are quite tricky, so it's a good idea to practice this exchanging and borrowing using the method that I've shown you. That brings us to the end of the test. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you found the video useful. I will repeat that this test has been made optional for teachers, but a lot of schools are still getting children to sit it, to see what their gaps are, to see where they need to work on. But also as a parent, it gives you an idea of how your child is doing with the year two curriculum and content. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Lots of people watch our videos, but are not subscribed, especially with assessments coming up this year. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.